yo what is up hope everyone is doing okay i am doing great thank you so much for asking so in today's video we are talking all about websites i am just sick of seeing people having bad websites and i know they are good at what they do they are creatives they are architects they are talented but their website just does not do justice to their work at all. So in today's video, I wanna talk about how you can brand yourself, how you can have a good looking website, how you can just present yourself better to the world. So let's take a step back and actually start with the question, why do you need a website in the first place? Like why do you even bother? Well, my only answer is this. If people cannot find you anywhere online, it's just like their first instinct if this person is trying to scam us. And you know, you're trying to run a business. People are gonna be paying you. People are, like, especially in architecture, people are trusting you with their life savings. Like they worked so hard their entire lives and you know, they are trying to give you money to design something that's gonna be very meaningful to them. So they're, trust me, they are not gonna like pick anybody randomly. They are gonna do their due diligence. They're gonna try to like find projects from you. They're gonna try to find if you have like any write any articles written about you any blogs any and if they don't find you there is just a red flag honestly and if your website is not aesthetically pleasing people just tend to um get turned off by that especially if you're in a field where it's heavily focused on visuals or like just just aesthetic in general is very important to have your website do that for you like don't let your website work against you and you know just like think of it this way would you ever hire somebody who's overweight or somebody who's not fit as your personal trainer like would you of course not because like they didn't even help themselves how can they help you and you know it's the same logic applies to architecture or like design if you don't have a good eye for design even for your website how can you like design something that's good for other people and trust me your online presence is what's gonna do the heavy lifting for you because if your website is good and you present yourself a certain way then you're gonna spend less time chasing clients and trying to prove to them that you're good because your website is or has already done that for you and you know like there is a, a statistic that you have seven seconds to make a good first impression and like if your website is slow like people do not take that shit anymore like your website needs to be up there and you know like blame it on tiktok blame it on instagram whatever but people's attention span is getting shorter and shorter by the second and your website needs to be up there like no slow websites uh no link no broken links no lorem upsum text like i don't want to see any of that i just want to see a proper website that's easy to navigate that you know gets the job done projects are easy to find just boom 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 we don't want to waste anybody's time and we don't want to waste our time either so now that i convinced you that you do need a website don't rely on your portfolio pdf as much especially if you're trying to portray yourself as a business as somebody who's trustworthy definitely a website just like sometimes i actually want to refer some friends of mine or colleagues of mine to clients because like i'm busy or i don't want to take the project and then the client asked me like can i see their website and i'm like actually you know they don't have a website and the client is like uh it, it just it's a turn off like it's an immediate turn off like i i experienced it firsthand so now let's talk about your domain and where you're gonna host your website um there are a lot of people that spend like thousands and thousands of dollars on building a website on wordpress or like hiring a software engineer to do that and i do not want you to do that for several several reasons number one if you have that much cash please don't throw it at like some marketing agency to build your website because you would rather spend that on like something that's gonna be useful like i don't know like some architectural course or like on your software like on your revit and lumion because that's actually gonna have like a direct roi on your business number two because i am sure you can do a better job at that than like some marketing agency and number three is this is something coming from my brother who is a software engineer and I, when i asked him about you know how should i start my website and everything he was the one who directed me to squarespace and the reason why he said that is because my a website like for architects is basically a portfolio it's something that's constantly evolving so you're going to be uh, needing to update your website like every other month and i don't think you should give that access to somebody else you're going to have to pay them every single time you have a new project that you want to add to the website you're going to have to hire them again and i don't think you should like be spending that much cash on your website um so like i have my i built my own website and i just go and i do it myself so i don't need any maintenance i don't need anybody to like look at it or like if the server is down somebody has to like come and fix it for me it's like i trust squarespace to do that for me they are a great company 
by the way they're not sponsored i wish they were they don't even know that i exist but it's just so much easier and that's like the best result for the least amount of money and effort so like you can't ask for more than that so on squarespace there are a few things you can do you can get your domain from there for example what your website name should be like my website name is malikbilajdel.com and because i am an architect so i want my name to be on the website and i mean you can you can pick whatever name you want so once you get your domain now you're ready to um, build your website but before you pick the template though i want you to ask yourself what kind of image do you want to portray to the world this is like branding 101 and there is a good branding diagram that I've come across way way back um, and it has these uh, 12 brand archetypes so for example when you think about Rolex what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Apple when you think of McDonald's for example like Rolex for me it's like this super luxurious brand you know they are very meticulous about how they build their watches like a watch takes I don't know like six or twelve months and it's handmade so it's like very very detailed um, just handcraft product when you think of Apple you think of something super creative you think of like sleek nice innovative design when you think of McDonald's you think of like fun you think of like the red and yellow logo you think of like you know just like being a kid it's like something playful when you think of Walt Disney you think of like the Disney World like something magical so all these words that are coming to mind when you hear a brand that's your personal brand that's your brand image and I think it's like it really depends on how you want to come across i personally think like if you look at my website this is what comes across you know it's like i want something to look sleek i want something timeless um i want something that's easy to navigate it's it has a, a black background so it's not taking that much attention away from the project because again it's the content that matters you know you you don't want your website or like your graphics to override or overshadow your projects because that's just Sometimes like some websites are an overkill, but I just want to like go over some brands, you know, like the Rolex um, example that I gave you, the Apple, um, and I just want to show you like how they are portraying themselves. I have three examples. I have RH, which is a, an upscale luxurious furniture company, my favorite company in the entire world, I think. Um, and I have the uh, Rolex uh, website open and then I have the um, um, Apple website um, and then I have on the other hand I have Target which is a retail brand here in the US then I have Walt Disney and I have McDonald's so are we gonna compare these websites um, one next to the other and then you will see the difference and you will see how important branding is so let's start with RH so this is their homepage like it's just like looking at it, it makes me like Want to take a deep breath like there's just something so elegant and nice and timeless about it and you know like you see their jet they have private jets they do interiors for private jets and they do interiors for boats or for yachts and they also have restaurants with their furniture stores which is just it's like such a cool business model and they just opened a restaurant here in san francisco and it's like so beautiful um so basically yeah, yeah you see their website is like super minimal and they have all these like dynamic these like motion pictures that are very slow you know it's nothing fast it's nothing too distracting but it's just like it gives like the website sound it's not static basically um so these are like some of their um uh these are some of their magazines this is their um this is their new restaurant sf uh this is the uh, private jet um interiors that they're doing Oh, so good just like there's just something about this company that is so calming and and um just I, I can't find the words for it but i think it's just like something that you feel you don't necessarily uh, can explain or articulate um but anyways let's go to like some of their furniture um um so you know these are the furniture it's very again it's very grounded in website anyways you get the point so now let's look at um rolex same thing they all have like these videos that are like playing in the background which is something that i actually wanted to do for my website but i couldn't because it was made the video was making my website very heavy and i just decided to like stick with um um stick with just like a static image and uh, let's look at the iphone like um look at when you like hover over you know like just things that are it's not a static website it's um, it's very dynamic if, if I would put it in one word um, anyways now let's look at Target you know it's immediately like colors 
like jump at you it's like flooded with colors and there's nothing wrong with colors but you have to use that very very carefully um, it can make the website look cheap it can um, take away from the product or the service that you're trying to sell so be very careful yeah it's a lot of yellow a lot of red a lot of green a lot of pink it's just it's a rainbow um, it's Walt Disney same thing so much colors and you know like Walt Disney is for kids so it has to have colors of course you're not gonna show them like a private jet because they cannot resonate with that and this is like important because you need to know who your ideal client is of course if you're selling to kids or like if you're designing kindergartens yeah your website needs to look like that but if you're like trying to do high-end residential or you're trying to like do interiors for yachts which is not even a thing that i thought it exists until I, I, I until i found out about rh but i guess it's a thing so you know you want to be very very careful with your uh, with your palette so now that you decided on what kind of impression you want to give off it's going to be so much easier to pick um a template from squarespace because um your ch your your choices are narrowed down to um a few types um, for example let's go to squarespace here squarespace.com uh templates um explore templates i think architecture would fall under art and design click art and design um, and then you just see all these examples. I think this this is a good template. It looks clean. It looks minimal. View demo site. Creating space. Yeah, it's nice. The pictures are flowing. Um, you know, it's very it's very easy to find the projects. You see, they have like the black button. Um, they have some contrast. The wording is in white. Uh, pretty cool. You have about. So you know, you just like. You, you they don't have they just have like a typical lorem opsum and then you just add your own text to it our services the projects pretty cool like i i can see myself picking this template i think it's really easy to st to start with a template instead of like doing it from scratch start with a template um again because their graphic designers did the hard work for you they picked the right font with the right color palette um, and then but if you see something that you like on Pinterest or if you see something that you like on Behance or something You can always add that and you know, it's pretty easy to modify as you go uh, But I do not suggest that you do you start your own template So now that you have the template that you want to start with I'm gonna show you what my back end looks like on my website for an architecture website You don't need more than four or five tabs. Honestly, you need um, a home page. Of course you need a project page um, and I think that should be very visible like it's very easy for clients to to hit the project button or it's also here see project services on like what do you do uh, do you do interior work do you do landscape work do you do um, facades I don't know um, then you get your logo then you have your about and I think for your about is very helpful to have your own image because um, you know if you are a solopreneur um, don't try to like use um, like a name of a company to hide behind it because you know it's people think that you know oh you know you're a company people are more likely to hire you but actually it's not especially if you're doing residential architecture people like to connect with a one person they don't want to like deal with some corporate where their project is gonna get lost in like a 2,000 people firm they want to see who you are they want to connect with you on a personal level it's helpful to have your own picture have your own, like a little bio about what you do yeah again um, Squarespace is really easy to navigate I think the main pages that you are probably going to be looking at is these top here the pages and the design um, everything else just don't look at it so pages when you go to pages there is something called primary navigation which is the side where I have home project services home project services and there's a secondary navigation which is this side and that has the about the blog video and the content uh now let's go to design design here you have the logo you know this is where you're gonna put your we're gonna upload your logo um the site style you know um this is uh, uh the borders of the side this is how big you want your header to be how big you want your logo to be um just like you know like the minutiae of the of and the details of the design now let's go to the project um, page because that's the meat, that's the elephant in the room, that's the elephant on the website um, because that's your main content. People, when they first um, go to the project, for me, I like a black background. I told you earlier, I um, want to just like dim everything around it and make the product stand out. So let's say I click on this project, let's say I click on the Joshua Tree project and this is what it looks like. I have the title. Um, I think this is a date when I added it. Um, so I have the project description. I have a gallery here of the photos and it, this is how you can edit this page. Again, you can just click plus here and you could Im you can add the image, you can add the text um, and then um, you can have like a gallery 
you know this is the design you can even have like the main image and then little images at the bottom you can have a carousel you can have a grid it's just like plenty plenty of things that you can do with squarespace and it's such a powerful tool yet very very easy to use so yeah i think all in all this subscription for squarespace i pay about 150 dollars a year or less than 150 dollars a year so it's really really cheap um relatively to what you get out of it um and i think for my domain i paid about 50 dollars for my domain and 150 for squarespace basically the whole um website cost me 200 dollars a year um and then i just renew it i have an annual membership and you just renew it it's really really cheap i don't think you can beat that price by hiring an engineer or by hiring um, a marketing agency to do it for you so again thank you so much for watching i hope you learned a thing or two and i will see you in the next one bye